all started. The history of a high-fat diet. A high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet is nothing new. In fact, this diet has been around for hundreds of years, especially used by people who lived in difficult weather conditions, like in very cold weather. Studies have shown, for example, that the Inuit people who live close to the North Pole have been on this kind of a diet all their lives, and surprisingly, they are much healthier than us who live an easy life and have access to all kinds of foods. Interesting, right? So the Inuit people only eat what they catch in general. Throughout the year and in the summer, they get some plants and vegetables which they can gather. Um, so that's pretty much their diet. The story of a high fat diet started back in 1906 when records show that a gentleman uh, with the name of Stephenson, who was a Harvard trained anthropologist, decided to do some research and to live one full year in the Canadian Arctic with the Inuits and eat only what they ate. That was his experiment. Now, eating the fish and the cod food in the Arctic, you have to know that approximately 75% of um, the calories from their food comes from fat, right? It's cold. Animals develop fats to protect themselves from the cold. And despite that, the Inuit people have no health problems and neither did Stevenson, who later on in his life vowed to eat only meat and drink only water when he returned to New York City. So, of course, when he published his, his um, results of the studies, the medical world was outraged by his choice, but he insisted that he wants to continue that lifestyle back in the States. And because that's healthier than anything, and that was his conviction. So he included everything from an animal, the meat, the fat, the bone marrow, the brain, the organs, which he said contained all the vitamins he needs, and we know that's true. After a few years of doing that, Blood tests showed that he was perfectly healthy with no high blood pressure, no extra fat stored on the body, no negative side effects at all. So not only that he did this himself, but actually his team joined him along the way. So they all um, decided to do this diet for years and years in a row. Based on these results, from him and the team, all the blood results and all their um, health. And after running studies and studies, a few medical institutions like the Mayo Clinic and Cornell University started using a similar diet, high in fat and low in carbs, to treat children with seizures. Again, the results were incredible, and for several decades, using a ketogenic diet, many patients became seizure-free. Later on, when the pharmaceutical companies started creating seizure medication, the medication became the preferred treatment for seizure patients, and the ketogenic diet, being you know high in fat, almost disappeared, so people kind of forgot about it. They still used it um, in, uh, in people who had digestive problems in the hospitals, and they still use it to this day as infusions um, for critical condition um, patients, right? So it's not gone, or it wasn't gone altogether, but it was gone from being very, very popular, and modern uh, medication replaced it um, to start with. Now, back in the 1950s, a biologist and pathologist doctor, um, his name was Dr. Keyes from University of Minnesota, introduced a theory that there is a direct correlation between fat intake and heart disease. And he pursued to start a few studies to demonstrate the theory. Dr. Dr. Keyes pushed the idea that fat is bad and eventually, he concluded that saturated fat is the worst enemy for health because it causes heart disease. His main argument was that high cholesterol from saturated fat, which comes from animal products mostly and um, coconuts, high cholesterol increases the risk of heart disease and saturated fats and animal meats increase the cholesterol, which we know is true. 
The result was the worldwide different medical association and food-related government agencies who went along with his reports and at that moment in time, in the 1950s, fat was branded as a killer. So now, we cannot eat fat anymore, but something needs to replace those calories in our daily meals as well as the taste in the food, because if you extract fat, the food is tasteless. Therefore, the new low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet was believed to be the healthy option, so they added carbs and sugar in the foods. Following this pattern, food companies saw an opportunity to create and introduce to the consumers low-fat versions of most all normal foods and new oils and butter spreads to combat the traditional fat which was now deemed as unhealthy. And that is what we were told and we believed and most people ate for the last almost 70 years. That happened until a few years ago when a big surprise came from the results of 50 year long studies. Instead of affirming that what all of us believe to be true, um, and while all of us were told since we were born the fat is killing us, the studies concluded that heart disease rates did not go down in the last 50 years while we all avoided fat. In fact, when they compared our health today with the average health 50 years ago, it was clear that the numbers of heart disease and type 2 diabetes and obesity and high blood pressure and dementia and other serious conditions have increased drastically. Therefore, the new studies broke the direct correlation, so literally they cut the connection between fat, especially saturated fat, and heart disease. Now, medical doctors, dietitians, and nutritionists are agreeing more and more that bad sugars and refined carbs are in fact the true cause for obesity and for heart disease, and not fats as we've been told. In fact, they also agree that certain fats are in fact very healthy, and the right fats can be critical for our bodies in order to function properly, and not offering the bodies these good fats has, um, has um, damaged the body, the human body, along the way by just not eating the right fat. Even though these new results were published in the last few years, the return of ketogenic diets did not happen now. It did not, it did not happen overnight as a response to them. In fact, a version of the keto diet, as we know it today, became very popular in the 1970s when Dr. Robert Atkins introduced it as the Atkins diet. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about the Atkins diet and see what is the difference between Atkins diet and the ketogenic diet as we apply it today.